this is Rutherford's uh, planetary model. You remember? Okay. But they never showed it in the book. I thought, well, what is it? It is, and you've seen this before. You've got the nucleus. And you don't, you don't have to memorize this. This is just one of those things that, oh, that's where that came from. You've got the, the big nucleus like that, and you've got an orbital this way, going that way. You guys have seen this picture before? That was Rutherford's model. And he's the one that came up with it. And it's the one that we tend to stick with, even though it's inaccurate. But it's the one that seems to have stuck around the longest. Question. Is that on a plane? I know it's supposed to look 3D, but did, I thought I read somewhere that it was on a plane, so those are actually elliptical? Or is, it, is that supposed to represent that it's going in a circle, just 3D? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's fine. I don't know. But you know, even at the Atomic Energy Commission in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, they're still using that thing. They put that out there. It's really, it's, it's the most sciencey type of Figure, you figure that you've got. It's very inaccurate, but it's really, really cool. So they started looking at light. They knew that there was a correlation between the two. They also knew that burning certain chemicals would give off different colors of light. Light has a dual nature to it. You can look at it and say, yeah, it's, it's definitely a wave, or you can look at it and say, no, it can't be a wave, it's got to be a particle. So we're looking at both aspects of that. Well, nice. But anyway, they, they knew, and this is this is one of the better examples. There are some other really, really good ones, but they knew that depending on what chemicals you lit, you'll end up with a specific color. 